Nova Scotia is one of three provinces that make up the Canadian Maritimes. This popular summer vacation destination draws in visitors from all around the world to explore destinations including Halifax, the capital city of Nova Scotia, and coastal towns like Piggy's Cove and Lunenburg. Nova Scotia is also known for local fare such as haddock fish and chips, creamy seafood stew, and oat cakes. There's so much to do, see, and eat in Nova Scotia, we could easily spend an entire summer here, but a week will have to suffice. Welcome to Nova Scotia. We made it. New province. First item on our to-do list, explore Cape Breton Island. Getting ready to tackle the Cabot Trail. We stopped in at the visitor center and got a map and we just filled up. Very important. Plenty of gas stations, but it's good to be, sh good to be sure. So we're down here right now. Mm -hmm. I say we do the loop going counterclockwise. That way we can be on the ocean or cliff side of the road. Let's Should do be it. a lot of fun. All right, you're gonna get some coffee made. The very last of my uh, Demi Toss Tanzania. With a full tank of gas and a hot cup of coffee, we set off on the 300 kilometer drive around Cape Breton Island to take in scenic views of the high sea cliffs, small fishing villages, lighthouses, and oceanfront beach resorts. But my favorite stop along the trail was at an overlook where Kate made us a delicious meal. I made us a hearty vegetable soup. Found a nice pull out to take a break and have lunch. And we have a beautiful view. That we do. I could go on forever about how beautiful Cape Breton Island is, but there's so much more to do in Nova Scotia. On our way towards Halifax, we found a charming urban park in Truro to stretch our legs. Victoria Park offers trails, waterfalls, and a 175 step ladder that will get your heart rate up. With the mosquitoes out in full force, we both wore our anti-bug gear to keep the biting bugs away. I am really impressed by this park. This is just a local neighborhood park and it is absolutely gorgeous. Kate and I both agreed it was awesome to have this park as our backyard for the afternoon. That was a fun stop. Excited for the tidal bore tomorrow. With the Bay of Fundy between New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, we found quite a few ways to experience the world's highest tides. One of our favorite experiences was riding the tidal bore and standing waves on a Kodiak raft. The two and a half hour tour was both educational and thrilling. I'm surprised you didn't fly out of the boat. I got airborne a few times. Yeah, you were right up front and I was watching you thinking, oh man, she's going over. And then I got hit by one of those side waves and I almost went back but I held on to the camera. And what better way to complete a fun day on the water than going to John's Lunch in Dartmouth for an order of fish and chips. This no frills restaurant is known for the haddock fish and chips. It's really good. Fish tastes really fresh. Nice light batter. According to the staff behind the counter, their fish is shipped in fresh every day and fried to order. To our surprise, Halifax ended up being one of our favorite destinations in Nova Scotia. There's the Harbor Walk where you can take in beautiful views of the waterfront, learn about the Halifax explosion that took place on December 6, 1917, and read up on the Transatlantic Telegraph near Murphy's Restaurant. For local produce, pop into the Seaport Farmer's Market, which happens to be one of Kate's favorite things to do. Oh look! Free samples of adult beverages. Yes, please. Noggins Farms is one of the what oldest, the oldest uh, orchards just, in Nova Scotia. The family's been through the 1700s. <laughs> so this is, we're, we're part of their booth because uh, we use 100% of their apples. Good apple. You want to try one? I'm good. 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 The highlight of our time in Halifax has to be afternoon tea with Ken and Kelly of Genuine Nova Scotia Oat Cakes. How Kate managed to find this experience is beyond me. I just went along for the ride and kept my fingers crossed for a cup of coffee. Are you guys up for coffee? 
Oh, um, please. Joe is always up for coffee. But I'm done. Coffee or tea? Either one. Would you mind explaining exactly what an oat cake is? It's just good food. Cookies are generally 50% sugar, and oat cakes are like 10 or 15% sweet. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're really good food. We're using all organic grains. We don't grow sugar in the Maritimes, so they're lightly sweetened with a magic combination of maple syrup and honey. We also just started making a, a maple magic oat cake that's with certified organic maple syrup. With the dark coffee, really good. You want to dip it in a coffee? No, <laughs> I'm not going to. Oh, it's so good. I love the texture. Preparing the strawberries because an oat cake with um, a slice of strawberry on it is amazing. When did you come up with this combination? Today. Oh! <laughs> Just for you. <laughs> Kate enjoyed the oat cake so much, she even pitched in to make a batch. I'm Audrey. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Do you know what the last ingredient is? Love. <laughs> Did I get it right? Yeah. Some people are going to get some special cookies made by Kate. Made with a lot of love. Extra DLC. Baba the mom. When Kate told her parents we were going to Nova Scotia, their number one recommendation was to check out Peggy's Cove. We parked the van at the visitor center and I waited outside to read up on their composting toilet system while Kate got all the tips about things to see and do at Peggy's Cove. Apparently, this tiny fishing community in Nova Scotia draws in over a million visitors a year. Since the weather was so nice, we decided to spend the entire day at Peggy's Cove, taking in the views and relaxing under the sun. We met Lester, a 10 pound lobster, and Leroy, a one and a half pound spotted lobster at the local seafood restaurant. Peggy's Cove definitely ranks as one of the most beautiful places we visited in Nova Scotia. Hey mom and dad, we made it to Peggy's Cove. Thanks for the recommendation. It's beautiful here. Once the crowds died down, we drove the van closer to the lighthouse to enjoy this spectacular sunset. Just when we thought Nova Scotia couldn't get any more beautiful, we made our way to Mahone Bay where we enjoyed a leisurely stroll through town and along the waterfront. See, that's what I want. Just a little floating house. Since it was our last day in Nova Scotia, we couldn't leave without going to Lunenburg. Situated on the south shore of Nova Scotia, this historic town is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a National Historic Site of Canada. What was supposed to be a short visit to see the sights and learn about the history of the town quickly turned into a food stop. It seemed like every restaurant we walked by was serving food I had to try. Our first stop was the Old Fish Factory for their oysters and ale happy hour special. These had to be some of the best oysters I've had in a very long time, and I'm sorry I waited so long to try the oysters in Nova Scotia. After my pint of Ice House Ale, we checked out the whale skull by the waterfront and Kate inquired about the horse-drawn carriage rides. Our second food stop was the Grand Banker, where I finally got to try my first poutine. Kate kept saying I should wait until we go to Quebec to try the poutine, but I'm glad I didn't wait. This poutine was amazing, especially with the pulled pork and coleslaw on top. Kate ordered the Acadian seafood stew loaded with haddock, scallops, mussels, and shrimp. That was awesome. Best meal we've had in Canada. And my first poutine, even though it wasn't traditional, it was amazing. An amazing seafood stew. Yes, your stew was incredible. All right, to the van. Let's do it. After our amazing meal, we made our way back to the van just as the carriage tour was going by. Whether you have a few days or a few weeks to explore Nova Scotia, make sure Lunenburg is on your list.